dawn breaks in the Ai Ai Richtersveld Trans Frontier Park, spanning across the South African and Namibian border. Here the mighty Orange River snakes through the center of the park, creating a green oasis that is in stark contrast to the surrounding desert landscape. When it rains, the Nama people of this region sings in their mother tongue, Thank you, Lord, I honor thee. Puddles of water remains only for a short while as the land takes a welcome break from the daily torturing of the sun. But within a few days, it is dried out by the extreme temperatures and the dreaded easterly wind. The wind can cause havoc by further drying out the land and blowing away valuable topsoil. This is the town of Kubus, one of the first permanent settlements in the Richtersveld. The town grew around a Rhenish mission set up by Reverend Johann Hein, who ministered the nomadic Nama pastoralist in the early 1800s. Here is about 980 Nama descendants in no more than 220 households, with more than 75% of households living below the poverty line. Livestock plays a central role in Nama culture. Settled within the Richtersveld Community Conservancy, this village has a contractual agreement with the South African National Parks and have access to the natural resources within the Richtersveld National Park. This allows for the persistence of the transhuman pastoral lifestyle to some of the Kubos livestock owners within the park. Sunpax is working with the Rockies Institute and the Agricultural Research Council to conduct a research on the climate change impacts on communities in um, Kubus. Uh, the focus of the project is on indigenous communities and promoting indigenous knowledge around climate change adaptation. The ultimate goal of the project obviously is to equip communities with tools to, so that they are able to implement adaptation uh, actions themselves. The process is led by Dr. Ephraim Samo in terms of training of the community members as well as students from the University of Western Cape and we've so far conducted a questionnaire survey as well as uh, focus groups on some of the stakeholders uh, around the Rector's Belt World Heritage Site. The, I remember the sections in the um, questionnaire, which was the exposure of the household. We, wanted to, we also wanted to know how many people are in the household and then the sensitivity to the, of the people to the, in the household and also um, how they adapt to, how they adapt to the climate, climate changing. And then in that state, last section was the adaptation, they, we spoke about human capital, um, financial capital, and social capital. Concurrent to the research project, a water harvesting project was run at the local primary school to honour the request from the community in the first meeting in 2017. 
Crowd funds raised by the Rockies Institute for this purpose was used to install four 10,000 litre water tanks and the replacement of the gutter system to capture store water for the school that often has to close because of a lack of water. This project was a new experience to the young UWC students and their Kubus team members, and they certainly learned a lot over the three weeks. And yeah, the project was so amazing because it allowed me to see that people like, are aware of what's happening around them. It's, they are aware of the fact that it's because of the drought, it's because of desertification that everything is just, the prices are going up and they have less to eat. And even though they have less to eat, they stay hopeful, stay faithful. Um, so what I'll take away from that is like, like always be hopeful here. Yeah. I guess, and um, yeah, just in whatever circumstance, I could always see that these people, you find a way, you find a way to survive, you don't just sit down and fade away, so yeah, that's what I think. Ik zie af is een nama en ik het dat klomp goed wat ik hier geken het, wat ik geleerd het bij die mensen, die wat goed, en ik het niet van die topic klimaat voor anderen gaan niet meer. It's the people who make their living from natural resources are the most affected by climate change. So not only the people in the Markland, people in Canada, in America, in Europe, in South America, all those who live sort of close to nature are very much affected by climate change. So we are hoping that what we would learn in Namakwalan, specifically in Kubus, that the greater Richtersfeld, the greater Namakwalan and the greater South Africa could learn how local communities who are living so sort of close to nature, that how they can adapt to, to climate change. So we'd like to have the lessons that we would learn through this project like to be taken up by others. The most important is the reality. And the effect that can be felt by us, you can yourself see. And the first thing for me is, we feel the nagevolgen of other people's lives. But it's good that we don't have to worry about the money price. And the people who are doing what they are doing, I believe that we can also get to the other way to get to the I'd like to thank the, the Kubus community for sharing with us their views on climate risk and imparting upon us their indigenous knowledge about how to deal with those risks. I'd like to thank the students from the University of the Western Cape who've been fabulous. In, in helping us talk to the community and surveying them and really getting to understand the community. I'd like to thank the Rockies Institute for organizing and funding this research. And of course, I'd like to thank the South African National Parks and the South African Agricultural Research Council for their support of this research.